In this lesson, we're going to talk about biotin. The structure is shown right here. Biotin is also called vitamin B7. It acts as a coenzyme in the body, which means biotin can bind to an enzyme and enable that enzyme to do chemistry that it wouldn't be able to do on its own. This coenzyme enables an enzyme to add CO2 to a molecule. It enables carboxylation. To begin this process, biotin must first become linked to a lysine residue on the enzyme, and it'll link up right here. However, this carboxylate at biological pH, at pH 7.4, is going to be deprotonated, and it's going to be in this anionic form. So it's really difficult for a nucleophile, a lysine residue, to come in and just attack this carboxylate. So biotin gets activated first. It undergoes a reaction with ATP. In this reaction, biotin is going to become bound to this entire piece of the molecule. So this carboxylate will attack this phosphorus atom, kicking off pyrophosphate, which is two phosphate groups linked together. So we can show our first arrow making the bond to phosphorus, and then we'll kick off pyrophosphate as a leaving group. And now our carboxylate has formed an anhydride linkage, and it has the whole AMP piece attached. The carbonyl of this anhydride is much more easily attacked now by a lysine on the enzyme because this is a great leaving group. Let's look at that process now. Here's our enzyme-bound lysine. It's easier to show the mechanism in one step when the lysine side chain is not charged. Let's bring in a basic amino acid residue to deprotonate lysine while a lone pair on nitrogen attacks at this carbonyl. So this attack is facilitated by a basic amino acid residue which removes a proton from the lysine. And we can show the electrons from this bond that are left behind making the new bond to this carbonyl. This will form a tetrahedral intermediate, pushing the electrons up onto oxygen. They'll swing back down, and I'm going to use a biochemical shorthand to just show the bond breaking to the AMP group. So these two arrows represent a shorthand of two distinct steps. The first, where the nitrogen attacks here, and these electrons push up onto oxygen, forming a tetrahedral intermediate. In the second step, the electrons swing back down and kick off this group, but this is a perfectly acceptable abbreviation for that. Now, biotin is linked to the enzyme in an amide linkage here, and this enzyme is said to be biotinylated. Now, the biotin is going to react in such a way that a CO2 group is transferred onto this nitrogen and then can be transferred onto another molecule. I'm going to draw an abbreviated structure of biotin, and let's walk through that process. The process of introducing the CO2 group onto this nitrogen is going to begin by an enzyme residue, a basic enzyme residue, deprotonating this hydrogen atom here. But this molecule isn't very acidic. I don't know the pKa of biotin, but urea, which is just this here with NH2 groups on either side, so we need to add a group onto each nitrogen here. That has a pKa of 26.9, which really isn't very acidic. But in the active site, other enzyme residues can be carefully positioned to facilitate this proton becoming more acidic. And so we're actually going to have a positively charged lysine residue hanging out with this carbonyl here. The interaction of the carbonyl oxygen with this positively charged nitrogen is going to make this hydrogen atom much more acidic. Now a nearby basic enzyme residue can deprotonate this hydrogen atom, and we can push electrons all the way up until we get an ion pair between the lysine and this oxygen atom. So our lysine is still up here, positively charged. This enzyme residue now has a proton on it from biotin. And let's draw what biotin looks like. We're adding a double bond here and pushing these electrons up onto oxygen. 
And now this nitrogen is ready to attack a molecule of CO2. These electrons can swing down and this can grab the CO2 molecule, but it's not quite that simple. We don't just trap CO2 gas inside the cell. In fact, CO2 gas will react with water and form the molecule bicarbonate. So bicarbonate needs to be trapped in some way. And let's look at that step now. So this is how bicarbonate is going to look in the body at pH 7.4. We have this one OH group deprotonated, so we have this anion. It actually looks a lot like this. And remember, we couldn't just attack this directly with lysine. We needed to activate it in some way. And here we used ATP. And with bicarbonate, again, we're going to use ATP to make this carbonyl more reactive, but it's going to react in a slightly different way. This time, this group will attach to the terminal phosphate. So here I'm abbreviating this ADP is all of this part of the molecule right here through this second phosphate. I have the oxygen atom drawn out so I can show my arrow pushing. And then this phosphate group corresponds to this phosphate group here. In this reaction, we're going to attack the terminal phosphate, kicking off ADP. Since this is a carboxylic acid, this will become ionized, become negatively charged at physiological pH. So we're going to lose this proton. It may be that an enzyme residue comes in and grabs the proton, but it might also be that this deprotonates spontaneously and the body can just accept the H plus in a buffered system. So since we don't know how that happens, I'm just gonna write minus H plus and show what we get. So representing the loss of a proton this way, and now the enzyme that's bound to our activated biotin here can bind our phosphorylated bicarbonate. And this will become attached. The mechanism may occur in one of two ways. Perhaps these electrons push in and this kicks off and a CO2 molecule is produced in close proximity to this nitrogen atom. But I'm gonna show you another way that we can also show the arrow pushing where we're going to push down through this system and attack directly at this species here instead of producing a small amount of CO2 very close in the active site. However, both mechanisms are plausible. The electrons on oxygen will push down. The double bond from this carbon to nitrogen can swing out. Now the electrons from this carbon oxygen double bond push up to make a tetrahedral intermediate, swing back down, and kick off a molecule of inorganic phosphate. Inorganic phosphate in the body has one proton on it. And so as this is leaving, we can use an acidic enzyme residue to make sure this leaves in its correct protonation state. We still need to link up these two pieces of the molecule. So I'll redraw that down here and we'll continue on with our third step, which will be the transfer of CO2 to a substrate. In gluconeogenesis, Biotin transfers a carboxyl group to pyruvate to form oxaloacetate. So let's look at this step of gluconeogenesis. Here's pyruvate. I'm going to draw out the hydrogen atoms on this carbon. Being adjacent to a carbonyl group, these hydrogen atoms are acidic, and they can be removed, and an enolate can be formed. A deprotonated cysteine residue, a thiolate, in the active site can deprotonate one of the alpha hydrogen atoms and an enolate is produced. Now we can show our arrow pushing where these electrons swing down, the enolate attacks at this carbon and we cleave the CO2 off of biotin. Alternatively, we can show our arrow pushing so that we produce a molecule of CO2 in close proximity to our enolate of pyruvate and it gets attacked. I'm gonna draw our molecule of CO2 right here. I'll draw it in purple so that it isn't lost between our two blue structures that are quite close. Now our arrow pushing will look like this, and we produce a molecule of oxaloacetate. To sum up, biotin is a coenzyme, an enzyme helper that allows for the carboxylation of enolates. Biotin needs to be activated to be linked up to a, a lysine residue on an enzyme covalently. This activation occurs with ATP and forms an intermediate.
Biotin first needs to be deprotonated to act as a nucleophile, and the enzyme active site can facilitate that process. Bicarbonate is the source of CO2 in these reactions. It first becomes activated by reacting with ATP, linking up with the phosphate, and then biotin can attack it, producing a molecule of inorganic phosphate and our carboxylated biotin. Enolization of a substrate allows for that substrate to become a nucleophile, trapping the CO2 produced from biotin and introducing a CO2 group onto the substrate. 